and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, My friends, take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enlighten us and preserve your church in your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll hear the reading at this point. Romans 13, 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to your neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. <laughs> If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Now we'll hear a sermon by Bishop Larry Kochendorf. Welcome to the sermon series that our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada is providing for congregations throughout the summer months and into September. I'm Larry Kochendorfer, and I serve as the Bishop of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. It's great to be with you this Sunday. As I prepared for today's brief sermon, I want to acknowledge my appreciation for the writings of the Reverend Dr. David Laus, who can, currently serves as senior pastor at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church 
in Minneapolis. And the Reverend Dr. Caroline Lewis, professor at Luther Seminary, St. Paul, Minnesota. I've significantly borrowed their wisdom and insights and their words in the shaping of today's sermon. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, enliven and strengthen each faith community with a promise of your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin today by singing a simple text and a beautiful melody used with permission of the composer Bruce Harding. Where Two or Three Are Gathered was written as a gathering song for Sunday worship during the 2002 Easter season using the text of Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. The text of the song is very simple. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Please join me in singing as you become familiar with the text and melody. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, Two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. These words seem particularly poignant in our COVID-19 pandemic reality. A word for our present experience where many are gathered in twos or threes as families, as cohort units, as bubbles. A word of promise for this time that Jesus is with us, I am there. This word is good news for us this long weekend in our present reality. It's good news proclaimed elsewhere in this gospel according to Matthew 2. At Jesus' birth, the child is to be named Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the final words of this gospel proclaim a similar promise. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. As we enter today's reading, mindful of this good news of Jesus' promise, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I wonder if we hear today's reading as about rules or as about relationships. Are we here being given rules to live by, or are we being invited to consider relationships over, well, over just about everything else in our life as followers of Jesus? I have most often understood this reading as about rules, and maybe you have too. Rules quoted in constitutions or bylaws about how we are to maintain order in the Christian community. I've heard them used by those who are more than eager to go and point out the fault of another. They've also been cited as a way of handling disputes and then used as a rationale of why someone should be shunned. If this reading is about rules, it's rather simple and straightforward. If someone offends you, confront them. If that doesn't work, try an intervention. If that fails, cut them off and toss them out. Excommunicate, exile, shake off the dust from one's feet, wash one's hands of the person, and move on. But what if this reading is not about rules, but about relationships? What if it's not about providing simple and straightforward instructions, but about the never simple and often complicated work of building authentic Christian community? What if the intention here 
is not about systems or procedures or a rule book to follow, but more about reconciling and restoring to the community a sister or a brother, a sibling in Christ. And what if this gospel writer's primary concern is not actually about settling disputes within the community of faith, but, but about creating a space, environment, room, opportunity, where Jesus' presence, where two or three are gathered, is able to bring forgiveness, healing, joy, hope, and life. Let's briefly look at the context of today's reading. The verses immediately before tell of the shepherd's delight in restoring to the flock a sheep that has strayed and the command to beware despising others, even if those who seem of little importance. And the verses that follow set a new standard for forgiveness. First, multiplying Peter's sense of appropriate forgiveness beyond imagination, not seven times, but 77 times. And then suggesting that our ability to forgive others may be the key as to whether we ourselves are forgiven. Preceded by the story of the lost sheep and followed by a new standard for forgiveness. Today's reading seen in its context is about relationships, about community, about reconciliation and restoration. It is offered by someone who knows that relationships take work to maintain and that community is much more difficult to create and nurture than we might imagine and that working out conflict and disputes as a community together, rather than simply declaring judgment, can be very, very hard. Jesus urges those in the faith community to have honest conversation in private with the offending party. No passive aggressive behavior, no triangulation, just straightforward conversation. This is so hard. I would rather complain to others about the one who has offended me than to talk to the offending person, but Jesus leaves no room for such behavior. If the offending member refuses to listen, Jesus advises bringing along one or two others as witnesses for further conversation. And if the member still refuses to listen, the matter may be brought before the whole community. And if the member refuses to listen to the whole assembly of the faithful, then and only then is the member to be treated as a Gentile and a tax collector. Even here, dear friends, in the context of the gospel according to Matthew, a Gentile or a tax collector is not someone who is beyond the reach of God's mercy. For throughout this gospel, Jesus makes a point of reaching out to the Gentiles and tax collectors. Religious leaders were outraged that at every opportunity, Jesus extended himself graciously to them, even eating and drinking with them. He was known as a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Again, it's about relationships, about reconciliation and restoration, about forgiveness, healing, joy, hope, and life in community. And if it becomes necessary to exclude someone from the faith community for the sake of the integrity and well-being of the community, this is never a final judgment. A community shaped by Jesus, by his life, message, and cross, is a community always seeking to restore and to reconcile. A community shaped by Jesus by his life message and cross is a community always seeking to reconcile and to restore. Make no mistake, the work of seeking authentic community where two or three are gathered is hard, but also powerful and healing and an incredible witness. 
It is difficult. It is challenging, to be sure, but also worth it, always. And when we grow weary following the path Jesus set, let us remind one another of the good news that we have Jesus' promise that each and every time we try where two or three are gathered, he is there with us, instructing us in the way of love, urging us on, forgiving us, and sending us to be a people, a community of reconciliation and restoration, accompanying us wherever we go. Join me in singing where two or three are gathered. In my name, I am there. I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, I am there. Amen.
comfort those who need your special care, especially those whom we need in our hearts for our love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For this congregation, make us signs of your love and forgiveness in this community and in the world. Help us to grow in our love for our mother. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In thanksgiving for all the faithful witnesses who put on the Lord Jesus Christ, especially keep us faithful until the day we rejoice in your majesty with them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us now join in singing the second hymn.
for indeed found the good news. Hope to see you all here soon. Don't know yet when, but hopefully soon. <laughs>